Hello everybody, it's Wendy and today we are going to look at the Jesse James Bead Mix Who's Bringing Pie. <laughs> so this is so cute and then we're going to make something with it. So we're going to unbox that in just a second but first of all our encouraging word for today is give a girl the right shoes and she will conquer the world. For me, those are flip-flops. <laughs> all right, so let's take a look at this. We have all different kinds of pie here it looks like. <clears throat> And let's start with what looks to be key lime right here. So I'm just going to open these up and we're just going to take a look at all the pretty little beads inside here. So we've got some, looks like some cat's eye faceted rounds here. These are really cool. Really pretty. We have some leaves. Okay, a little top drilled briolette style leaves. We have some two whole tile beads. These are interesting. It's not something I see in Jesse James mixes a lot, so that's kind of interesting to have. And these, we have got some little lentils. So these are drilled right up here at the top. And then, you know, they hang like a little, kind of like a little round drop. They're cute. We do have some drops here. And these have like an electroplated finish on one side. We have some little tiny saucer beads. These are cute for spacers. Really cute for spacers. Little teeny saucer beads. And then we've got some rhinestone rondelles, which I love. Okay. And then we have some really pretty bicones and some elongated bicones. So there they are. So that looks like the uh, kiwi pie or um, key lime pie mix. And then it looks like we have peach here, which is my favorite peach pie. Ooh, look how pretty. So we have some of these really cool, I don't know if you can tell, but these are like really weirdly shaped. They're just like a blob. They're really cool. Got those. We have some larger bicones. Uh, we've got, these look like two whole beads as well. These are interesting. They're kind of like hexagon shaped. Little hexagon shaped two whole beads. Okay, we've got some, oh, these are cute little flowers. These are really cute. Bunch of those. Little daisy spacers here. Oh, these are cute too. These are little flowers, like little drop flowers. Really cute. There's a bunch of those. Some regular drops. Um, some little, looks like fire polish. Um, four millimeter fire polish here. And these are cool. These are kind of electroplated. They match these blobs. They're little tiny blobs, it looks like. Really cute. Oh my, this is a cute mix too. So that looks like the peach pie. Uh, then it looks like we have pumpkin, which is my second favorite <laughs> after peach. Wow, these are pretty. Okay, so we've got some really pretty, like, metallic, matte, they're kind of like flat rondelles. We have some top drilled um, diamond shaped beads. We've got some metallic looking, just little um, organic shaped. They don't really have a single shape to them. They're cute though. Uh, we have some cubes, some orange cubes here. We have some rhinestone rondelles again and a couple of really pretty um, rhinestone beads. Got some round, just glass beads. Six millimeter, it looks like. Um, some bicones here in a couple of different colors and sizes. Some drops, more little drops. Those are so cute. And I think that's about it. Oh no, here are some, these look like little cat's eye um, faceted rounds here. Really pretty. That's pumpkin pie. Then we have cherry pie here. I think this goes in the next one. It's kind of 
got out. Okay, so, ooh, cherry pie. We've got some table cut rectangles here. We have some large pie cones and a beautiful, beautiful deep, deep red. Those are really pretty. We've got some smaller glass bicones cones here. Check bicones cones, it looks like. Um, we have some, ooh, these are pretty. These are rondelles, and they kind of have this faceted edge. Really pretty. I like these. Um, they're really pretty strung on something because they give a lot of sparkle. Okay. We've got some saucers, spacers, and some smaller, almost like a basket weave. Those are really cute. Um, we have more two-hole tile beads. And these are interesting. These are just like a, I don't, they're not quite a heart shape. They're just a dime or a, a triangle, I guess. But they're pretty cool looking faceted. And then some faceted rounds. So that is cherry pie. Get them out of the way. Then we have chocolate pie. Mmm. Chocolate pie. Chocolate pie has some more blobs. <laughs> Those are so cool. I love them. Chocolate pie blobs. We've got some large pie cones. Really pretty, sparkly. Uh, we've got some really pretty, this is kind of like a casey gold color. Uh, metal beads here and daisy spacers. Teeny weeny ones. Some pretty flowers. Really pretty flowers. Um, a couple of ovals here. These are almost kind of like a twisted oval. I don't know if you can tell that, but they're really cool. And some cathedral beads. And it looks like one, no, here, two. Two little bicones. Those are pretty. They're very sparkly. So that is chocolate pie. And I'm guessing, I guess that's, I'm guessing on the flavors, but it's what it looks like to me. Then we have this black one, which could be, gosh, I don't know, black raspberry or black cherry or blackberry. <laughs> I don't know. That picture doesn't really tell me much, so hmm. but we'll take a look at it. We've got some really cool two-hole um, pyramid-style little beads here. Some daggers, or I call these spikes. They look more like spikes to me. They're top-drilled. Some large bicones, sparkly, sparkly. Some rhinestone beads here. These are pretty. Okay, some more two hole tiles. There's another spike bead. Uh, some lentils, more little lentils. And then these teeny tiny little bicones. <laughs> These look like they're two millimeter. They are so small and cute. Wow. So that's our, I don't know if it's black raspberry, black cherry, blackberry. <laughs> I don't know, but there it is. And then next, I would call this one probably, it's purple. So I think I would call that one blackberry just because blackberries are usually kind of purpley. I don't know. That's my guess. So here we have some really pretty fire polish beads. Really pretty. There they are. Really sparkly. We've got some spike beads in here. Look at those. Those are so cool. Okay, we've got some drops. And these spike beads and the drops are brillet drilled. Top drilled. <clears throat> We've got some faceted, these look like fire polish too, faceted rounds. Okay, we've got some two hole little hexagon beads. Uh, we have some little, really cute little flower drops here, and those are gorgeous, and some bicones. 
really pretty. And then we have some bead caps here, some little flower bead caps. We have some tiny little spacers in like a pinkish color and um, like a iris kind of finish on those, or peacock finish. And then some little flowers, center drilled flowers. So I think this is blackberry. It could be grape. I don't know. Does anybody make grape pie? I don't think I've ever had grape pie. <laughs> I think it's blackberry or raspberry. I don't know. But pretty, pretty little mix. And then last but not least, I think we have coconut cream. Yum, yum. Let's look at coconut cream. So in coconut cream, we have some pretty, pretty little sparkly beads. These look like they have glitter inside. Beautiful. And a couple of these as well that are really cool looking. We have one Hishi bead. <laughs> I don't know where the other one went. And maybe that just got put in there by accident. I don't know. But we'll set it aside. Um, a couple of rhinestone metal beads. We've got some pretty little drops here. Okay, some cute little, I call these rice beads. That's what they look like, little grains of rice to me. Um, let's see what else here. We've got some bead caps, like a filigree style bead cap. We have got some opal, white opal looking bicones. Those are really pretty. Okay, we've got some fire polish here, like a six millimeter fire polish. Um, some little saucer beads, like little saucer spacers. They're kind of like a, they almost look like an opal finish or a moonstone kind of. They're pretty. It's not really showing up on the camera, but they do have like this iridescence to them. And let's see these beads right here, these little oval, really super cute. Okay, so that is, those are all of the pie <clears throat> uh, mixes. So I'm going to um, pause the camera for a minute and get everything cleaned up and we're going to make something. Okay, <clears throat> so we're back. So here's what we're going to make. We're going to make a necklace and this little pair of earrings here. Okay, so I've done one just to practice. Um, and what you're going to need is I'm taking all four of the large bicones out of the cherry pie mix and three of the large bicones out of the <clears throat> blackberry mix, the black mix. Okay, I'm using four of these saucer spacers um, and these were in the cherry pie mix. Then I'm using four, five, seven of the little rondelle, rhinestone rondelles that were in the key lime pit mix. Um, I'm using, I've got three, four, five, six, seven ball head pins, two fish hook ear wires, um, this chain from Jesse James Beads, and I will link this in the description box below the video. It's really pretty, sparkly chain. Um, I have two jump rings. I have this toggle clasp. And I have these two little clamshell end pieces that come with this chain, okay? So that is what you're going to need. Oh, and some 18 gauge silver wire, okay? So first of all, we're going to do the pendant piece. And this is not hard at all. It takes a little practice. Sometimes you may need to do it a couple of times to get it right, but it's just not hard at all, okay? So I'm just going to cut a piece of this wire. Um, this is about six inches here, and I'm going to use my little wire tool to straighten it out. <clears throat> okay, just like this. And then what I'm going to do, and you're going to need a ring mandrel as well. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. Or something round to, uh, to put, make your pieces out of. I'm going to take my round nose pliers, and I'm just going to roll a loop back. Just like that. So I've got my loop facing this way and my wire coming out the same direction as I've rolled my loop. 
Now I'm going to take my ring mandrel. And I don't like to use this part of mine because it's flat. <laughs> and it makes it look weird. So I come way up here on the end. And I'm just going to wrap, take my wire and wrap it around my ring mandrel. Just like that. And what that does is it creates a little round area here okay so I'm going to cut my wire right about here and this is you know you kind of have to each one will be different you kind of just have to do it like you like it so you know that's the way I'm going to do mine and then I'm going to take my little pieces here I'm going to take my tiny rhinestone rondelle I'm going to put it on okay then I'm going to take my spacer bead I actually only need two rondelles on this side, I think. Let me make sure I'm doing that right. <clears throat> yeah. Then I'm going to take my other saucer spacer, put it on, and my last little rondelle. Oops. So I have two saucer spacers sandwiched between two rhinestone rondelles. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my round nose pliers again. And I'm going to take this little end right here, and I'm just going to roll a loop under. And you can make it as big or as small as you want. <clears throat> I kind of like it right like that. And then I'm just going to shape my piece a little how I want it. And again, this is totally personal preference. You can do it any way you like. I kind of like that right there. Okay, now you can work hard in this if you want to. I don't really feel like it's necessary to do that. Um, you know, it seems to stay. This is 18 gauge wire and it seems to stay in shape pretty well. So I'm not going to work hard in it. But if, again, if you wanted, you could take your bench block and just pound it out a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to take my ball head pin. I'm going to put my bicone on here. I'm going to come up a little ways from the top of my bicone just to give it a little room to get my other pliers in, and I'm bending 90 degrees. And then I'm going to take my round nose plier, and I'm going to come up and over, just like that. And then I'm going to rotate this up and come under. And I'm not going to close that loop because I need to go ahead now and put this on my pendant piece because I'm doing a wrapped loop, okay? So I'm just going to take it, put it right on there, and I'm kind of being careful not to bend my whole thing out of place. Now, if I do bend it, then I can always, you know, you can always fix it, but try to be a little careful. I'm going to open that up a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to go right in here. Oops. And just get that, hang that right on the pendant piece. And if everything would quit spinning around on me, okay. Then I'm going to take my pliers, <clears throat> and I'm going to grab this in the bend of the two wires, where they come together right there. And I'm going to take my other pliers, and I'm just going to wrap it. And I'm just going around a couple of times. All I'm doing is securing the, um, you know, the wire, the head pin, so that nothing comes undone. I'm just going to wrap around a couple of times here. And then I'm just going to trim this right off. My cutters are so dull. It's, I've been complaining about this for a long time. <laughs> I need to get a new pair and I just haven't done it. There we go. And then you can tuck that if you need to. If there's a little snaggle, you can tuck it in, but I think I'm okay. And I'm going to do that with both other bicones. So I'll do it one more time, and then I'll pause it and do the last one without boring you guys. So put it on, bend at a 90-degree angle, take it around those pliers, come up and over, rotate up, bring this around, but don't close it. <clears throat> We're going to put our black one in the middle of our two saucer beads. This is fiddly. It's hard to get it on there, especially if you close it too much like I keep doing. But it will go. <laughs> there we go. 
Okay, I'm going to take my pliers, grab right here in the bend where the two wires, my two pieces of my head pin meet, and then I'm just going to wrap. And again, I just go around like one and a half to two times just to get it secured in there. And then I'm just going to take my cutters and trim that piece off. Okay, just like that. <clears throat> so there's those two. Now I'm going to do my other red one right here between the, these two beads here. So go ahead and do that and come right on back. Okay, so here is our cute little pendant piece. Now, <clears throat> um, in order to hang it on the chain, we either need to turn this sideways, because obviously the chain is going to go through this way, or we need to get a jump ring. And I think that I want to keep it that way and just use a jump ring to hang it, um, because I just kind of like the way that this looks this way so i'm just going to hang i'm going to get a jump ring and i'm just going to hang it right on the chain with my jump ring just like this okay and now i'm just going to take my chain and put it right through my jump ring now you can cut this chain to be however long you want it to be. Um, you'll have to judge that for yourself. I don't like something like this to be too long. I think it needs to kind of hang up around your collarbone area. So I am going to, I will tell you how long I cut it here in just a second. So I'm just going to cut it. I held it up to myself and I'm going to cut it right about there. And then if I measure that... <clears throat> It is right about 11 inches per side, so 22 inches total, okay? And that's before we put the clasp on. So now I'm just going to take my little clamshells here. This comes right in by the side. Just you lay the little ball in there, and then you just close it up, and that is literally all there is to it. It is so easy. <laughs> to do this closure here. So you just lay it right in there and just close it over the top little ball. And that is a very secure little finish. It's not gonna come out, just make sure that it's closed. And then we're gonna take our jump rings and just hook our toggle on. So, I'm just going to take my jump ring, put it right through here, hook my toggle. I like this little toggle because I thought it just kind of matched the swirl um, in the pendant piece down there. And we're going to do the bar the same way. maybe <laughs> there we go just have to open that jump ring enough to get it in there don't I close it right up and there we have our necklace so you could do this with any colors and really any beads that you wanted but I just thought it would be kind of a classy little Christmas looking pendant. Um, and why is it hanging sideways? There we go. It's not. It's just, just the way that that jump ring is hanging. But here it is. You could even hang something from right here if you wanted to. A little dangle of some sort. But I think it turns out really pretty. Now, the earrings, we do the exact same way. So here's our earring. And we're just going to take... A piece of our wire um, I just you just need to cut a small piece it doesn't take much at all for this earring so maybe four inches if that and I'm going to use my straightener again straighten it up here okay 
And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my ball head pins now, my wraps now, so that I don't have to try to insert it onto the um, wire here after. I'm just, I'm going to try to do it beforehand. I didn't do my other ones that way because I was just afraid that it wouldn't bend with these on there, but um, I'm going to try it ahead of time because it's a little bit easier not to have to wrap it um, on your wire, if that makes sense. I hope it does. I'm tired this morning, and like I said in my previous videos, I've been sick for like three weeks. I can't seem to get over it, and uh, it's just for me. <laughs> So that does not want to trim off. I have got to get new cutters, guys. That's all there is to it. Where are my other ones? Let me try this little pair. These are my beetle on ones, and they might be better. Let's cut that snag off right there. Yeah, that helped a little. I need to try to tuck it. These um, head pins, these ball head pins are stainless steel ball head pins, and they are not like your typical thin ball head pin. <laughs> they're pretty, pretty uh, robust, so they're a little bit hard to deal with. But I do like them because they're stainless steel, so I know they're not going to tarnish. All right, come up and over. Same thing on this one that we did on the other one. Wrap a couple of times. <clears throat> I thought this made a really cute um, holiday set, you know, with the red, but you could use red and green and make it very Christmassy if you wanted to. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to take our wire here and we're going to go, go ahead and roll the loop back just like we did on the other on our pendant piece, just like that. So we've got the loop. What did I do? Did I do that wrong? No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> we've got the loop and then our wire coming out. I don't know what I'm thinking. So now I'm going to take my uh, ring mandrel again, and I'm going to go down here to the smallest part of this handle piece. Like I said, I don't really care to use the, um, don't really care to use the top part. I need to get another ring mandrel because it has that flat spot, and it just messes everything up. But I'm just wrapping it around, just like I did on the other one. Okay, I got that kind of crooked, didn't I? Let me fix that. Okay. Now, we're going to mirror these. I mean, obviously, you want it to be, you want this one to be a little bit different, face a different direction than the other one, I guess. I mean, I guess you don't have to, but I like to. So, I'm just going to make sure that's nice and round again. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, and just like I did my other one, I'm just going to cut it right about here. Now, these, you want to get them to where they're the same, okay? So, I am going to just turn it over here, and I'm just going to go ahead and try to even it up right now. First, I'm going to put these on. So, I'm going to put my little rhinestone rondelle on. Don't forget to put these on before you make your second loop <laughs> on the bottom. Otherwise, you're not going to get them on there. So, a little rhinestone rondelle. And then my, I think, let's see, how did I do this one? If I mirror them, this one hangs this way. Let me look at this for a second. This one's going to hang this way, right. So, I would need to put my red one. <clears throat> and then my and then my black one is that right no that's not right nope I would need to do my black one first have to think it through don't I and then my red one yeah and that would mirror them okay and then I'm going to put my little rhinestone rondelle on okay so here's what I've got so I'm going to go ahead and I want to make this guy the same as this guy it's pretty important. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to bend it up just a tad because 
I'm going to make it look like this other one. And, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. You just want to get it as close as you can. So I'm just bending this piece up here just a little bit. There we go. Close it back up. Okay. It still needs to come up a little. And every time I do that, I'm opening that loop. There we go. Okay, that's better. And then I'm just going to form this around. So I can cut this off a little bit more. It doesn't need that much. <clears throat> and now I'm going to take my plier and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to make this loop on the bottom. Okay, so the loop on the bottom is definitely rounder on my other one. So let me see if I can round it out a little bit. There we go. And we're just going to go ahead and bend it up. And you want to do this carefully because you don't want to, you know, get it too bent in one direction or too bent in another. My loop still needs to be rounder. And if you need to take it out, like if I need to undo this and redo this loop, you can. I think that's what I might need to do. I think I didn't get down far enough on the end. So let's do that. Let's just go ahead, take it loose a little, come in here, and then redo it. And you can always do that with this wire. There we go. That's a little better. I need to close it up. Close the loop up a little. There we go. Okay. And then you're just going to want to take them and hold them together and kind of just shape it. And you want to get it as close as you can to the other one. That looks pretty good. That loop's a little bit bigger. Let's see if I can make this tinier. And if you, you know, end up misshaping it, just play around with it. <clears throat> like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, just close. This one is definitely not looking the same as the other one. I think that's what I need to do is take that out just a little. And round it up a little. There we go. That's a little bit better. And I just keep playing with it and messing with it until I get it just exactly like I like it. And actually in doing that you're work hardening it so that's kind of good I just kind of play around with it until I get it where I want it and that's looking pretty good okay so then I'm going to take my other fish hook and you just want to make sure that you hang it the correct way so that it's going to hang mirrored with the other one. Close it up really good. And there we have it. And again, you can play around with it a little bit more if you need to, to get this exactly right. Um, but... You know, they're handmade earrings. They don't have to be exactly perfect. You know, they can have a little variation. Um, as long as they're close. You know, as long as you've got it to where there's no obvious <laughs> major, you know, imperfections or anything like that, you're good. So, I think those look pretty good. They are very um, close in what they're supposed to be. 
but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really think these turn out pretty. Um, and again, you can play around with it for a while. Here's our main pendant piece. But I really like these. I think they're super cute. And you can do so much with them. You can, um, you know, customize the colors. You can, there's just a lot that you could do to make them, um, you know, customized and, and just really, really pretty. You could, uh, colors that people like, you can take them and just do the same thing with their favorite colors. So these would make really good gifts. Um, just a lot of fun, a lot of fun to make. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Okay, so here we are in my light box and I wanted to show you the necklace and the earrings hanging together. So I think it turned out really cute. Um, they're unique, they're handmade, nobody's gonna have anything like it. So great gifts um, these would make and yeah, a lot of fun to make too. I like really kind of working with the wire and just you know, um, customizing the beads and all that. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will have links for all of these products in the description box below the video so you can check them out. And um, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye.